Are you stuck in a lab where you're trying to find the grams of an unknown chemical using Beer's Law and absorbance spectroscopy? Stick around to see how it's done. Welcome to The Flock, here on the Decanta channel. Beer's Law is a unique mathematical setup that we use for absorbance spectroscopy. It's very useful in that it relates absorbance and concentration together so that we can determine the concentration of an unknown chemical sample. For example, each chemical substance has a unique and characteristic absorbance spectrum with its own specific wavelength giving a lambda max peak. So just like this absorbance spectrum here, acquired in a lab setting, has a lambda max peak value of 629 nanometers, would tell us then that this sample is likely the blue number one food dye sample, because it's the closest lambda max to what we saw in the lab. This technique itself is based off of the premise of how much light will be absorbed into a chemical sample. For example, when you take a cuvette filled with an unknown sample, or a sample of any kind, and you pass a light source through it, there's a detector on the other side within the computer that will generate this absorbance spectrum giving you a lambda max for said chemical. So that lambda max is the value that we can plug in for our A, our absorbance, in Beer's Law equation, which is the value we obtained from our spectrometer in the lab. What about the molar absorptivity, or this E? It's also known as an extinction coefficient. Where does that come from? This is also something you have to obtain in the lab setting by performing a parallel dilution set. Well, what is a parallel dilution set? A parallel dilution set is where we have a stock chemical and we have deionized water or DI water to dilute the stock chemical in a set of dilutions. So for example, if I took eight milliliters of the stock and I mixed it with two milliliters of the water, I would still have a really concentrated solution. We want a whole set of dilutions. So we're gonna keep lessening the stock and increasing the DI water to decrease the concentration of the stock. Let's say for the next one, we have six milliliters of the stock, so less stock, but we add more water. This time we're gonna add four milliliters of water. Notice that my total volume is remaining the same. Initially I had eight plus two, now I have six plus four, so I'm aiming for a total volume of 10 for all of the samples in the dilution set. And maybe the very last one is super dilute and we only have one milliliter of stock, but nine milliliters of water. That means that our last sample would be super diluted. Let's just hypothetically pretend now that the beakers below have these concentrations. So what can we do with these different hypothetical concentrations now? Well, now that we have the concentrations from our parallel dilution set, we still need to figure out what this epsilon value is. In order to get that epsilon value, I'm going to need to make a calibration plot. And to make a calibration plot, I need to measure the absorbance of each one of the samples in order to plot that on my y-axis. So if I was to take a little bit of sample out of each one of these dilution set beakers, I can place that in my absorption spectrometer and create a graph that looks like this, where absorbance is on the y-axis and concentration in moles per liter, molarity, is on the x-axis. The sample that is more concentrated is going to yield a higher absorbance. This is because the concentration in this case is the number of particles or atoms or molecules per volume, not the mass per volume. Therefore, as the concentration increases, there must be more particles in the solution. Therefore, there are more objects to block the light from passing through in the absorption spectrometer. An easy way to visualize this is with a pad of paper. If I have just one sheet of paper and shine a light through, you can clearly see the light passing through. This would be an example of a lower concentration with less particles solution. However, if you have a sample that has a lot of particles, suddenly the light is not passing through as much. Therefore, it's getting absorbed into the sample or absorbed into the paper in my example here. Now I could clearly see that my 10 molar sample would probably have the highest absorption, then the eight molar slightly less, the six molar slightly less, the four molar slightly less, and the two molar slightly less. That'll give me a convenient little line on a graph. What's great about this line now is that it's going to give me a slope. That numerical value for slope from our calibration plot is literally the extinction coefficient, the E value times the length of the cuvette that your sample was placed in. 
For our purposes here, we're going to assume that the path length of the cuvette in centimeters is going to be one centimeter for this particular lab. And for many labs, the cuvette happens to be one centimeter in path length that the light is traveling through. Now where you're probably stuck is on this concentration part. The lab is asking you to solve for grams of the unknown chemical substance. We're going to hijack this equation to solve for that concentration in order to get to the grams. So simply by rearranging the equation to solve for C, our concentration, we can now see that the absorbance is divided by our epsilon, our extinction coefficient, times the length of the cuvette, which was one centimeter for this lab. So now that we have the rearranged equation, let's go through the units and make sure it all makes sense. Our concentration is measured in moles per liter. Our absorbance value was found from the lambda max in lab. Remember, this came from measuring at a certain wavelength where we resulted in a certain absorbance value from a plot that may have looked like this. On your y-axis, you had some kind of absorbance value at the very top peak and at a certain wavelength you were measuring in nanometers. That peak here is your lambda max value to plug into your rearranged Beer's Law equation. The molar absorptivity or extinction coefficient E has units of one over molarity times centimeter. Since big M stands for moles per liter, this is essentially saying the same thing as liter over mole times centimeter for our epsilon units. This is of course multiplied by centimeters for the length of the cuvette. Now it's a little easier to see that my centimeters would cancel and I would in fact be left with moles per liter because the absorbance on the top doesn't have units and we are looking for concentration in moles per liter after all. So now that we know the units check out, how do we solve for the grams of the unknown dye or the unknown chemical that we're interested in from the lab? The first step would be to plug in the values you obtained from lab into our rearranged equation. So you'll have concentration being equal to the absorption of your unknown sample divided by the extinction coefficient or molar absorptivity of your calibration stock times L, or the length of the cuvette, which again we were assuming was one centimeter in the case of most labs. And this would give you a certain value in moles per liter that you will take on to the next step. Now we need to get from concentration to moles, which essentially means that I just need to get rid of this L from the concentration I just calculated and be left with moles. So therefore I can say that to find the moles of the unknown, I just need to multiply my concentration, which is in moles per liter, by the volume of the sample I used in the lab, which is units of liters over one. Now it's easier to see how the liter units cancel and I would be left with moles. So step two would give me the moles of my unknown sample or unknown dye, which is kind of what we're basing this whole theme off of. Once I know the moles of my unknown sample, it's just one more easy step to get from moles to grams of my unknown sample or dye. So step three would be to use the molar mass of your stock bottle or stock sample of chemical in order to cancel out the moles and be left with grams as follows. To find your mass of unknown sample, You'll simply take the mole value you found in step two and multiply it by the molar mass provided to you in the lab on a stock bottle in grams per mole. Mole now cancels from top and bottom and you'd be left with grams. Hopefully now you'll be able to use Beer's Law to solve for grams of an unknown sample using absorption spectrometry. Please give this video a cool wax up and subscribe to DeConta for some more educational content. Hope your experiment is just ducky. No ducks. No glory.